Hey guys, I'm Eric, and this is Mark Benford, and we are Retro Gaming Nerds. On this great episode, we're going to be saving the many cities from utter destruction from missiles from the sky in the classic game, Missile Command, for the Atari 2600. Alright guys, so as you know, we're playing Missile Command, and Mark here is going to be schooled in the game. <laughs> it's uh, been a while since I've played Missile Command. So, don't feel bad, so it's me too. So yeah, it, it'll be fun. Oh yeah. I, I love Atari. I <laughs> loved this game as a kid, saving the cities, watching them blow, uh, or not blow up is the key word here, and trying to chain the explosions. I love doing that. Now, a lot of people don't realize that in these old school games, we had strategy. Chaining the explosion. You get one missile to go up and it blows up and it comes back down, another one hits it and blows yeah. up, and then you get another one to blow up. And it's a great way to save your ammo, and that's kind of the intent of the game. So we're going to see who's going to be the better retro gamer here on Missile Command. So you ready to get your game on? Oh, definitely. All Let's right. get it on. Kick it off. Let's see, what is it? You got hey, you reset, uh, last button on the side. There okay, you go. Yeah. Now, for all you youngsters watching at home, uh, Missile Command is one of those classic games. The game was designed where you're supposed to move uh, in the arcades and use a trackball to move around and launch your missiles at the oncoming uh, destructive forces from the sky. Now, of course, you only have the one turret in the center and it shoots in the you know, various directions and the missiles are coming down. You want to take them out before they knock out your city. Uh, on the Atari 2600, it was trackball supported, but I don't have that, so we're using the joystick, which adds a little bit more difficulty. Um, Honestly, there wasn't a whole lot different between the home version and the arcade version in all respects. So it's a pretty faithful recreation. Now, if you want to get more arcade accurate, I do have it on the 5200, but we decided that 5200 controllers don't justify the uh, prettier graphics. place once you lose all of your cities. Uh, now, if you get hit on the base, which the base can get destroyed, uh, you just hope that none of your major cities get destroyed in the process also. But if all the cities are destroyed, the game is over, and that's the end. There is no three lives, because technically you have six to play with. So the goal here is to properly assume which missiles you're going to take out, don't waste your ammo, and so on and so forth. Uh, we are shooting for not necessarily who has the highest level uh, gain, but definitely going for highest score. <laughs> now games like this are two player, but honestly I think going for this aspect, you know, taking turns, play through, without going back and forth, it just kind of adds a little bit more pressure because you don't have anything to sit there and compare to as you're playing along. Kind of make them sweat it out. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
He ran out of missiles. <laughs> Boom. End of game. All right. Not bad. 43-30 score. So as you can see, Mark got 43-30. Not a bad score, especially considering how long did, was it the last time he played? For Missile Command, it's been... 10 years or so, probably. Not so, bad for 10 years. Yeah. Now, honestly, I don't remember the last time I played this. Seriously, I don't. I know I played it like on the computer with a mouse. Totally different. Like I said before, uh, while he was playing, trackball, totally different gameplay style. But we're using the joystick here, so let's reset. Beat the joystick. Oh, yeah, it makes it so much harder. But here we go. Start to sweat yet? Yeah, I think you got me schooled there. <laughs> Fifty less than you right now. <laughs> Every building standing. Yep. Oops. It got me on one finally. Whoops. Miss that one. And that is the extra city uh, indicator right there since I got over 10,000. So I lost that one, but I got it right back. Whoops, too high. That one was cutting it close. Yeah. Oh, I hate those little satellite things. They are so annoying. <coughs> Excuse me. I might have to edit this one for time. This is a color scheme that is... Oh, I might not be editing. This one's getting a little faster. Ah! Ah! That speed is... Yeah, just a bit.
those little ones that come down without the tra uh, tail, for all of you not familiar, they're smart missiles. Uh, you can set off the bomb or explosion if it happens too quick. It'll actually dodge it and run away from it. And I just lost my another. Dang it! Ah! 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 Oh, I'm. D I went over to defend my tower and lost my city. And I did not make enough to get another extra city back. Well, it's close to what I had. You just have another digit out. <laughs> All right, guys. So we just saw the competition between Mark and myself. Um, Mark is using the excuse, oh, it's been 10 years, man. And yeah. I totally schooled him by about yeah. three, 30,000. Yeah, Three hundred. Do that, and it's close. Yeah, so, yeah. maybe. <laughs> so it's been a while for me to play too. Um, I won't lie. Uh, however, what you know, compared to like, kind of take away the aspect of the newer games that are out. You know, what do you think about the graphics? I kind of like the older graphics. I mean, probably nostalgia. Yeah. Um, this this is the kind of games that I grew up with. I mean, I grew up with an Atari. Yeah, me too. Uh, that's what we had. Well, I didn't have any other gaming system besides 386 computer until college. So um, I grew up, I played this game. Um, but I, I like the graphics. It's it's not all clean. It's not all realistic. Yeah. But well, it, it, I would say clean. I would say clean. There's, It's yeah. a clean well, simplicity. It, it is clean. I, I guess I just mean as far as uh, rounded corners yeah. and everything that way. You got that 8-bit. It, it, it feels clean. It feels wonderful. It's so simple. And yeah. it, it, there's no guesswork in what am I supposed to do here. You yeah. sit down with this game. you got a yeah. joystick and a button. And yep. you sit there and you play it. And you look at the screen and you yeah. see all these little cities below here. And you yeah. realize, I bet I'm supposed to defend those. Yep. And you see the things yep. falling from the top of the sky. And you're probably thinking automatically, crap, got to blow it up, got to blow yep. it up. Because um, when this came out, you didn't have the internet to no. look up to see what you're supposed to do. So... Having something that's simplistic in, yes. in what you're supposed to do, in a strategy still, it was it was a good thing. This game, it was it's a it's an easy game to get into. Yeah. Um, speaking of being an easy game to get into, the controls. Yeah. Now this game has two support modes where you can use a trackball with it, uh, which was the arcade design where you could use a trackball to move it around. Yeah. For you kids out there, a trackball is a big ball sitting on a sensor, kind of like an old mouse that had the ball in the middle. Yeah. Flip the mouse over, that's your trackball. Yeah, and we used to play games like that. That was our style of analog back in the 80s. And this game supported the home trackball. Plus, it supports the joystick, which is what we use because I don't have a trackball at this time. And the joystick, is, it's a classic. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yes, it's simple design. Yeah. With the joystick controls, how did you feel? It, it is different getting back into that joystick. The, the response is not going to be near as quick as, as modern um, controls, but uh, it still zips around. And, oh, yeah. And it, it's, you know, you got your four directions and it combines it. It works pretty well, and then just having a simple button to to launch. It's a joystick and a button. I have to admit, with the joystick on the later levels when it starts speeding up, when I yeah. go, right, well, that last level I was on, um, the precision with the joystick isn't there, yeah, and yeah. that's one thing that we've all known with uh, analog. And unfortunately, it's still not there even with the analog joystick of the 5200, which I have over here. Um, it's just. With the trackball, you zipped over there, hit the trackball to stop it, hit that fire button, boom, it lands yeah. where, right where you want it. With the yeah. joystick, you still kind of get it, but it's just yeah. not as... It gets you in the general area, but not as quick. It's like trying to draw a uh, Picasso on an Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah. The joystick being the Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah. Sounds. Yeah, got to got to love the old sound to it. Oh. Yeah, I, we're, all, we're so... Ki uh, we're babied, if you will, mm -hmm. where games today literally sound like stepping outside. Yeah. Um, back when I was growing up, when we were growing up, you know, when you look at the specs of the next console coming out, mm -hmm. how many channels of sound did it have was important. Yeah. Uh, how many, uh, how, how, what bit was the processor? Yeah. 
uh, stuff like that. How many colors did it have? Nowadays, we don't even think about that. The Xbox 360, the PS4, yeah. it's a computer. PS3. Yeah, they literally, oh, well, the uh, new consoles, they are computers yeah. just repurposed in some yeah. fashion. But back when this came out, there was, I believe, two channels of sound. Um, it is an 8-bit system. Uh, with the two channels of sound, there's only so much you can do with it. And you're not going to get digitized speech on this thing. Um, but it was identifiable enough. Yeah. It gives you something for background while you're playing. Um, well, the so difference yeah. between the smart missile and the basic rocket was... Well, besides the visual, you could tell they were different because one had that high-pitched whir yep. and the other one just psst yep. kind of thing and your launches and the beep that you would get yeah. indicating that, hey, you're reloading, yeah. stuff you like that. You had different sounds for different things, so it, it helped with the play of the game. Oh, yeah. Primitive but identifiable yeah. indicators, which is all we really needed back then. We didn't need, you know, Joe Montana or uh, John Madden giving us commentary during gameplay. Yeah. So, um, honestly, this is one of those ga uh, games that I think really stood the uh, stands the test of time yeah. in a lot of ways. Yes, it's not going to sit here and make you play for an eight-hour stretch trying to get those... That wasn't what the intent was back then. It was something to, you know, get take a little play. bit of your time and, and entertain you for a little bit. But you know, we did so much outside back then. When these yeah. games were up for We'd come in, play this for a little bit, catch our press in the yeah. hot summer, cool down, then go back outside and play. So, well, guys, we're always going to be playing more games here on Retro Gaming Nerds. We've got a lot of great games still. I mean, i got a huge collection over there. So we're also going to have more guests. Don't worry, my kids are going to be back for a few episodes here down the road. But, uh, hey, remember, we're playing more games on classic consoles. We are Retro Gaming Nerds.